John is here as well. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, how are you? John, <laughs> thanks for joining back. us. I thought I thought I'd stop in, in case anyone had <laughs> wanted a student's it's perspective. It's wonderful to have someone here who can speak to the student perspective of things. <laughs> sure. That's great. Thank you, John. Well, John just did a, a beautiful recital boards today. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello to um, Elaine and Yoon Sun. Um, I'm Angela. We've exchanged emails a lot in the admission process. Nice to see you here. Um, we have um, we have on hand um, and John John Prager is our, our current Lamont student. And then we have on hand Emily Book McGree and Stephanie Cheng. Um, uh, Professor McGree uh, heads up our piano pedagogy program and Stephanie Cheng is the chair of the keyboard department. Um, I'm here just to answer any admission questions you guys have. I'll be in the background if you if you have something um, to ask me, but otherwise I'm going to turn it over to um, Professors McGree and Cheng. Folks, it's nice to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. And I'll just walk you through some um, highlights, I think, about our pedagogy program at, at Lamont. Um, but please do ask questions as we're going through. So if anything comes to mind that you would like a little bit more information on or, or clarification, let us know, because um, we are happy uh, to expand on anything. The first thing that I thought that I'd give you a preview about um, is the different pedagogy courses that you can take. So you do not have to be in, in a, a pedagogy degree uh, in order to take any of these courses. So that's an important thing to know. So, so if you are looking for organ performance and you just want to pop in for a couple of classes, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, the first class on here is Introduction to Research in Piano Pedagogy. This is a course that's designed to have a lot of self-exploration in it. So if you are interested in a particular area of pedagogy, you are welcome to explore that here. We spend some time figuring out how to read research. I feel like that's really imperative uh, to make sure that as teachers, we are able to understand the, all of the music education journals out there and, and how to apply it to our own teaching um, directly from, from all of the research that's going on or out there. So this last quarter, this, this is um, a class that's taught once a year. And this fall, John was actually in that class. John, you want to tell them a little bit about your uh, project that you did? I was going to give them a preview, but since you're here, why don't you tell them? Was this for the uh, group piano teaching? for your your research class the oh the research class yes um i did a paper as kind of analyzing uh, whether whether students or just anybody when they're learning a piece if they should be learning it hands separately first or hands together right away and kind of going weighing the different uh research they've had and what various uh pedagogues um you know francis clark the chronister duke all all of the big names what what they have said and uh, you know what experiments that have been act what, that have been done on this and on practice habits in general. So I, I think this is a really interesting course, and, and John had a great quarter. Is it? Uh, he did that research project. We also had another student who was working on visualization and uh, performance anxiety management within lessons and how that can be applied uh, within all different levels of, of teaching, uh, beginners all the way through collegiate uh, students. And we also had another student who was studying the different uh, rhythmic uh, methodologies that are included in beginning piano methods and how, how efficacious they are. Um, so she took a look at, at, at how all of the different uh, methods introduce rhythms. Do they use TAS? Do they use TTs? Do we count one, 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 one? Do we count one, two, three, four? And, and their impact on, on student learning. Um, so that's a course that, that you really are able to figure out your own path and, and study uh, what interests you uh, with a little bit of guidance along the way. Uh, current trends in piano pedagogy uh, is, is just what it says. So. Um, this is a course that wasn't taught this year, but we're going to spend a lot of time in the future uh, delving into diversity in piano pedagogy and how uh, making sure that we have uh, good representation across our composers that we are introducing to young students and, and our intermediate students alike um, and, and how we can be 
um, better educated in that area to make sure that we're giving them a well-rounded education there. Uh, elementary piano pedagogy talks about beginning methods, uh, beginning piano technique, how we teach musicality to students um, from the very early age, how we uh, address technique. Um, I always tell my pedagogy students, like I think that, that beginning piano students are some of the most difficult to teach, right? You've got to get it right. Like it's it's laying those, those foundations down uh, from a very young age. So ideally you don't have to fix anything when they grow up and, and, and change any of their technique or, or things of that nature. So um, I think that that's one of the most important things that we can learn as pedagogues. Intermediate piano pedagogy um, talks about learning how to level uh, supplemental repertoire so that we know exactly how to sequence a student through intermediate repertoire uh, on their way to, to advanced uh, music and all of the technique and musicality that goes along with that as well. Uh, group piano teaching techniques um, is a course designed to explore cooperative learning structures and how uh, we can be efficacious as teachers in the group environments. Uh, this is one of my, um, my major areas that I really love. Um, and it's what I did my dissertation on when I was doing my DMA as well uh, on cooperative learning structures and, and self-regulation, their impact on achievement, self-regulation, self-efficacy, all of those wonderful things. Um, so we talk about classroom management. We talk about different personality styles and how that impacts the group dynamic and, and what we really need to be doing to, to be an efficacious teacher in that, that environment as well. Um, we also spent a good amount of time talking about adult uh, recreational classes in this one too and how that differs from, from younger students and how, um, how we can teach adults and guide them through their journey as well. Uh, and then Piano Teaching Practicum is a course that you can register for for varied credits, uh, zero to two credits every, every quarter. And this is uh, what um, John does to, to uh, participate in the preparatory program that we have that we're going to talk about next too. Um, so any questions on those courses at all or, or anything that we offer at Lamont? Okay, so mind? Professor Beckley, so are these programs for undergrads, right? No, these are our graduate courses. Graduate courses, these okay. Our graduate courses, yeah. Sorry, I should have put this in um, presentation mode here. Uh, yes, these are in all of the graduate courses. Our undergrads um, have a sequence of just intro to, to piano pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So they've got two, two quarters of classes that they take for that. So these are, these are uh, for our graduate students. Mm -hmm. um, now, the piano preparatory program I'd love to talk to you guys about. I think that this is one of the things that really sets Lamont School of Music apart from other universities out there. We have a really wonderful preparatory program where um, community uh, members, kids, uh, faculty, staff at DU can come and take classes with us in the prep program. And as John mentioned, he has been a part of that uh, for the last couple of years at DU and he has been um, helping team teach a variety of our group classes for younger kids. Uh, and their uh, private lessons that go with it. All of our students who um, take our level one, two, or three courses, mm -hmm. they have a once weekly group class that meets for, for this year, it's, we do around 45 minutes, they're meeting online. So that looks a little different than it would in person. Uh, and then they also have a 30 minute private lesson every week that goes along with those group classes. Um, so our, our graduate students who are part of this program um, are there for all of the group classes and we, um, at the beginning, they just kind of watched me teach as we were figuring out where all the students were. And, and as the, the year goes on, they have been teaching more and more. Um, and John has been really wonderful about that and can maybe speak to, to that experience as well. Uh, and then they also are in charge of, of doing some of the private lessons with those class members. Um, this year, our classes are around four students. We have three to four students in each one of them. Typically, those will look somewhere between six and eight in a class uh, of little ones uh, for those level one and two and three, um, depending on, uh, on enrollment for that year. Obviously, this year was a little bit different uh, with the online uh, situation versus in person. Mm -hmm. We also have an adult group piano class that's typically going every single quarter. I am teaching that one this quarter. Um, it meets on Thursday evenings and we have a group of six uh, DU faculty and staff members um, with a variety of different musical backgrounds. Some of them took piano when they were very young and have not had any piano at all for the last 10, 15, 20 years. Um, some of them, this is a, a 
totally new uh, start for them. Um, they are beginning right now with us on this quarter. Uh, and it's really fun to see how they develop as a group uh, and get to know each other and kind of build that community. Um, and we tailor that, of course, to what they are interested in in that, that particular quarter. So for example, right now, we've got a bunch of folks that are interested in Beatles music. So mm -hmm. alongside of learning how to read music on the staff and understanding our basic chord progressions and how we hold our wrist at the piano and all of those fundamental that we're responsible for teaching um, our, our students. They're also having a little bit of fun with, with uh, some Beatles tunes as well. And then we also have some students who are involved in the prep program that are private lessons only. So those students take 45 minute uh, weekly lessons. They're not involved in the group classes. They just have their one-on-one -on -one time for that week. Um, but they are of course included in our recital opportunities that happen for the kiddos who are in uh, the group classes as well. Um, so this past uh, January, we had our first uh, recital of this year, and we did that online via Zoom. Um, and the kiddos were so great and sweet and cute. And it was very, it was fun to, to give them a, an opportunity to share what they have learned, um, mm -hmm. despite the different circumstances this year. I don't know, John, is there anything else that you want to mention about um, the group classes or the prep program at all? Well, yeah, there was a lot of difference between uh, in-person and online, but really the principles are the same. Um, it's all about getting with the group classes, it's more than just uh, teaching for them. It's more than just teaching basic concepts. It's also having the students work with each other and interact with each other. And that's where um, when, uh, um, when Dr. McGree is talking about uh, the group techniques class and cooperative learning and all that, there's a lot of good information in there about teaching these group classes. And I'm sure, and it sounds like um, some of you have had experience with group teaching already. So you, can t you know, it's a very different dynamic, especially uh, between adults and kids. It's very different. And uh, what's good about it is that there is a lot of structure and like there's a lot of freedom for the for the student teachers to, um, you know, make their own plans and everything and deal with each student how they see fit. But there's also a lot of structure um, that's provided through the program. And, you know, each week that piano practicum, we meet uh, Tuesday morning before the group classes. And that's where we you know, talk about everything for the week, any concerns in the previous week, any problems. Um, sometimes we'll watch some, some of our own teaching videos. We, we do a lot of recording of our own, of our own lessons so we can kind of scrutinize what we did well, what we need to improve on. So um, there's a lot of that really on every front with teaching is covered. And you, of course, get the hands-on experience. And especially with the group classes this year, um, getting, I'm getting more experience with teaching them and trying to, you know, command a classroom, which is really daunting when you first do it. And, uh, you know, it gets, of course, it gets easier every time and you learn a little more and you're able to see where you can get better. Yeah, thanks, John. That's really helpful. I, I um, as you were talking, John, I was remembering back to the first time that I stepped in front of a group class. I, I had an assistantship all the way through all of my, my graduate degrees. So I've had quite a bit of experience teaching collegiate group piano. Um, but I remember stepping in front of my first group of like seven year olds and we had eight kiddos in the class. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's a different world, right? You've got to think about classroom management, um, how you sequence things is, is different, how you uh, get them moving around the room is different. Um, and, and how you teach basic fundamentals within a group environment is also different too. So I think this is one of the, the really unique things that Oman offers, the ability to, to figure out how to do all of these things within a structured environment where, where we have a team working together with graduate students and, and myself kind of figuring this out as we go. And um, it gives you all of the experience that you may want or need uh, to, to do this on your own in the future too, which um, I think is really awesome. And it's something that I wish that I had when I was in graduate school too. So um, I think this is a really awesome thing to take advantage of. Um, any questions about the prep program at all before we move on? Are we good? Okay. If anything comes up, let me know. So here is a picture of um, the piano lab at Lamont School of Music. I thought that it would be interesting for you all to see this. Um, I was 
joking with some other folks earlier, this is my first year at DU and I, I haven't actually had the opportunity to step foot in this lab yet because <laughs> we've been doing everything online, but I am so excited to do so. Um, as you see there, these are state-of-the-art keyboards. Uh, there are 16 in the room. Um, they are top-of-the-line Clavinovas, Yamaha Clavinovas, and, and just offer a, a wealth of opportunity uh, for students when they're, they're in the room together. So um, this is a really great and wonderful tool that that we will all have um, when things are back in person as well so just to give you a little little snapshot of what what that room looks like um, and then I also wanted to mention a couple of other additional resources that that we have at Lamont that I feel are, are incredibly important uh, one is a really extensive resource library um, at, at Lamont there we, we have been working very hard even this year to update that and make sure that we have all of the um, most recent methods and materials out there so that as a student you're able to go in and really peruse all of the different options that you have as a teacher. Um, I remember as I was figuring this out as a graduate student it was one of the most important things for me to be able to go and put my hands on the materials and actually look through the sequencing and see how everything was taught and you know if I was teaching a lesson and and the method just wasn't working for the student having a resource to be able to go into and try to find a different um, different avenue uh, or, or curriculum for that particular student because every method does not work for every child um, or every adult or every teen. So, so there is so much uh, built in this resource library that you can really sink your teeth into. We are adding all kinds of uh, games this year and, and um, online tools as well. So um, this is a really wonderful uh, resource for our pedagogy students, those who are um, even, you know, those who are majoring in Oregon, even, you know, if you're anybody who is interested in teaching uh, any uh, private lessons. Uh, we also have a new MTNA student chapter here, which again, so glad that John is here because he is the current president for that. John, do you want to mention just a little bit about the, the chapter? Yeah, well, we just, uh, just started the chapter up this past quarter. Uh, right now, it's just four members. Um, obviously, right now, there's not much we can do in terms of events and fundraising other than, uh, you know, having having speakers coming, which we can still do. And I'm pretty sure uh, Dr. McGree has has also volunteered, has uh, volunteered some of her services with that, too, which we're really excited about. And um, yeah, that's that's about it right now. MTNA um, is just an association of music teachers uh, around the country, and they each have uh, local and local and state affiliations as well where you can, uh, you know, get in contact with events and meet other teachers. And it's just a very good resource. And if you're, if you're teaching, I'll, I'll recommend it right now. If you are teaching in the area, definitely become a member of MTNA, just the national organization, because there's a lot of opportunities within there. Um, and then one more thing about, I just like to echo um, what Dr. McGree said about the resource library. It's extremely vast. We have our own entire, we have our entire section we have entire call, like our entire section in the uh, library dedicated just to pedagogy. Um, you know, pretty much every major method: music tree, uh, mm -hmm. Royal um, RCM, Faber, Bastian, mm -hmm. just any, pretty much Alfred. Anything you can think of, we pretty much have it all in there. So that is that was a super useful resource, and I spent a lot of time in the library just going through all that, looking through all the material, and uh, trying to get ideas in my own lessons. Good. Yeah, and just to, to again echo John, um, I am someone who is heavily involved in MTNA. Um, do both of you know what that is? The organization? Have you had any involvement with it so far, or yet? I guess I should say. No. Okay. So it stands for Music Teachers National Association. It's it's one of our biggest professional organizations that we have in the country. Um, it is incredibly important for so so many reasons. Uh, one is just for resources. Uh, there are constant webinars, um, teaching events, things of that nature that you can plug into as a, as a teacher and, and watch master classes, watch other teachers do what you do and get other ideas. Um, there are comp or competitions that happen throughout this organization on the local, state, and national level um, that are, are important for young budding pianists um, as well as those who are highly advanced. Uh, there's also a conference that happens every year uh, at the state and um, 
a national conference as well. Um, I'm on the board for, for both of those actually organizations. So the CSMTA, our, our state conference happens in June, usually the first weekend of June every year. Um, and it's a wonderful resource for, for young teachers or teachers who are trying to establish themselves a little bit more in this area to meet other teachers in the area, um, get to know them, get on their uh, teaching lists for if they're passing students off or, or what have you, and just to watch other teachers work, right? One of the things that all of us, no matter how long we've been doing this, learn from is watching other teachers. That's, that's one of the best ways to get better. Um, so this is a wonderful resource for that. Um, I've also been on the planning committee for the National uh, Conference for Pedagogy Saturday, which is the first day of the National Conference every year um, for almost a decade at this point. Uh, and I'm on the, the, the recreational music making track uh, for, for that planning committee. Um, and that is a, uh, a movement, I would say, in this country, which uh, is intended to provide wonderful piano experiences and other musical experiences um, for those members on our community who maybe are not doing or interested in having music be their career. So we call them more recreational um, pianists, right? So these are the folks who are not headed to Carnegie Hall or to get their, their uh, performance certificate or, or anything like that down the road. They're just wanting music to be a part of their lives. Um, so we do a lot of training with that program of teaching teachers how to do that in the group environment and in the private, private scenario as well. Um, we are also doing a, a ton of webinars right now, um, almost every other week, sometimes once a month on different uh, teaching tools within that. And some, some of that means um, setting a studio up and what that looks like across the country. And some of that um, means how to get your body moving, how to get students moving um, with, with rhythm and, and internalizing that, that pulse, that beat uh, in their group classes. So there's a lot of really wonderful resources uh, to this. And I'd also say for me, this is one of the most important things um, for developing a network. The music community is small in this country. It's very, very small. We all know each other. Um, and it's important to have an avenue where you can get to know other teachers from around the country. Um, and it's one of the, the things that has enabled me to bring other guest teachers into the pedagogy classes too. Um, just this past week, uh, the students in my intro to pedagogy and elementary uh, pedagogy were able to watch teachers in Louisiana, Maryland, Utah, Mississippi, all over the country, right, uh, to watch different styles, uh, because I think that that's incredibly important, too. Um, one of the things that I have learned from doing my degrees in different areas is that there are different climates everywhere, right? How I teach and how I interact with families and how I set up my studio in Louisiana is very different than how I do it here. Um, so I think it's important to get that um, breadth of knowledge around the country and really learn as pedagogues how that might look differently because we never know when we're gonna end up, right? We might be in Denver forever. We might end up moving somewhere else and, and just having some different representations of what studios and teaching styles look like around the country, I think is incredibly important. Um, so that's one of the things that, that um, I have been able to do through my involvement with MTNA and, and then can pass along to my students here at Lamont as well um, through, through guest lecture presentations too and bringing those folks in. Um, John was able to watch one of my uh, good friends uh, who's a, a piano pedagogy person at University of Idaho uh, in talking about visualization and how that can impact memorization and all of those wonderful things with students as well. Um, so, so that's, I, I think it's, it's important to hear from pedagogues around the country and um, we try to make sure that we're doing that at Lamont on a regular basis too, so that you are able to interact and watch teachers of all different uh, styles and, and, and backgrounds. Um, so that's just a little, little nutshell. I don't know, Stephanie, if you want to mention anything or John, if anything else comes to mind. I think you covered it pretty well. Okay. Any questions we can answer for you guys? Yeah, actually, uh, Dr. McRae, I was uh, invited to perform at a virtual conference at MTNA yeah. uh, 2020. It was a uh, MTNA GP3 forum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there was, yep. am I right? It was kind of specified. Uh, yeah, so what, what happens, so the MTNA National Conference happens every single year, right? And then 
Also, there is a, a rotating NCKP and GP3 conference that happens. So GP3 ah, nice. is the conference that's intended just for group piano pedagogy. So it's, mm. it's a conference solely around group teaching and what that looks like and how we do that both at the collegiate environment and the little kid environment and everything in between, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've done a fair amount of presenting at those as well. And then NCKP, which I think, believe, is, is now the piano conference this year, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, also happens every other year as well. And that's a more broad conference. Um, the GP3 is very narrow, narrow in scope. Yeah. In terms of its so, so I was really thankful because they had uh, great opportunities even for uh, piano pedagogy presentation and also for yes. performance area. Yeah, but this time I was uh, I performed uh, the French uh, French um, woman composer Ceci Chamine. I played uh, arabesque at the time. But anyway, it was good because uh, we attended in all of the area <laughs> on online, so we learned a lot. Right, yeah, right, and right. then communicated each other. So yeah, even though of course Corona pandemic is worse, you know, it's really <laughs> it ruined our lives. But we were learning, you know, tool. So it was quite okay so far for me. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, one of the, you know, there are a lot of, um, uh, shall I say, interesting scenarios that have, have developed as a result of COVID, but there are also some really wonderful things too, right? Like there, there are yeah. lots of online sessions and webinars that are happening that are going to be resources out there online uh, for, for quite some time. Um, I'll also say if it's something that you're interested in, the National MTNA Conference um, is mm -hmm. happening starting March 13th, and that's the day of Pedagogy mm -hmm. Saturday too. So, so that is also an online resource, um, but mm -hmm. So, so check it out if you're interested, but I think yeah. it's really important that we have a chapter at DU too to, to um, really develop that on the, the local level too, because it's, it's important to mm -hmm. network with other teachers, watch other teachers, and, and really learn how we can serve our community. So that's, that's all I had to kind of talk to you about, but I don't know if, um, if, if Dr. Chang or, or um, Angela has any other uh, things that they would like to mention or ask about. I don't. Um, I think the program is really growing. Um, and um, we really want to make sure that even if you're not doing a degree in pedagogy, you'll be able to um, take classes and get hands on um, experiences. So we're really happy that, um, you know, we, we will be, we are doing that now. So that's um, wonderful. And then I was really impressed with the uh, uh, piano pedagogy library, the section. Yeah, because that's always I wanted to <laughs> uh, have at MSA because uh, I was a teaching assistant and piano instructor for uh, four years at the time. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, facility at MSC was great as a uh, deal because we had a Yamaha system as well. But for materials, <laughs> for teaching materials a uh, bit, yeah quite less than what you guys have. So it'll be really fun. And yeah. if I got into the school, yeah, I'm gonna use a lot. So thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's a great resource. And John, we added three new methods last week. So so it's, oh. it's constantly uh, evolving and, and we're making sure that it's staying um, totally updated with all of the, the most current resources out there. Cause I think that's so important to just be able oh. to use new stuff. Oh, and then for the prep school, do, do you do you guys use what kind of materials? I mean, do you use fables or? We use the piano safari method. Are you familiar with that one yet? Oh, it's kind of the out there. It's called piano safari. Uh, I've heard it. I haven't piano heard safari. it. Sorry. So it's um, a wonderful, like it's, it's a newer method. It's self-published. Oh. It's not one that you can just grab off of Amazon. Um, it was written by um, Catherine Fisher and Julie Nur, uh, who are wonderful pedagogues out of University of Oklahoma um, oh. and just have a, a really excellent way of sequencing materials. Oh. Um, and, you know, I've, I've taught for uh, a lot of years and, and coached beginners all the way through um, advanced students. And one of the things that I have experienced with the Piano Safari Method is that um, 
students learn technique better. I can tell uh, an immediate difference between my students who have been in Piano Adventures, the favorite method versus uh, Piano Safari. So that's something that we switched to this year. Um, Cause I, I, I think it's a really comprehensive method. It also has a lot of wonderful online resources as well, which, which is excellent for us this year when we're online, right? So that we can yeah. pass uh, resource videos along to our students. And that's something that we will continue to use in the future as well. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, and also another good thing about Piano Safari, it has a lot of rote teaching. So it's a lot of kind of learn by doing pieces uh, for the students, you know, so they can play more interesting stuff before they're even able to read it. Uh -huh. And that's been a big benefit. And uh, we did actually, we did also supplement with Piano Safari last year, but we used Music Tree before that. Oh, yes, Music Tree, okay. Yeah, and Piano Safari, they're very careful about, about reading um, and, and learning, uh, you know, all of the different um, positions and making sure that students are well versed in lots of different landmark notes along the way. Um, but it's a very comprehensive method in that it um, exposes the student to lots of different styles of playing too, like the rote learning that John was talking about. So really developing their ear, learning to recognize patterns, sequences, those kinds of things from the very beginning. Um, so so a, lot of, a lot of the methods out there don't do that until a little bit later. And I feel like that's, that's a really important skill for, for even our beginning students to learn. Um, so they develop good practice strategies and all of those wonderful things that need to happen at a young age. And also last year, we actually uh, did get to meet Julie Nur um, mm -hmm. over video. She actually did give a give a presentation uh, in addition to E.L. Lancaster from Alfred as well. So you'll there are opportunities to actually uh, meet the meet the people yeah. who create these methods. Again, it's a small world. We all know each other and, <laughs> and uh, um, are more than happy to, to come into each other's communities and talk about what it is that we know because we're just I, I think the thing I'm going to feel, especially in this country, is, is just we want to share knowledge, right, so that everybody can be better at what they do. Um, and, and I think that, that um, in general, everybody is just super kind and willing to share their experience, which I think is important. So, yeah. Any other questions, things that we can answer for you? Angela, I don't know if there's anything that you want to chime in on the, the um, admission side of the world. <laughs> Just that I'm I'm your person for admission questions. And when you are ready to apply to add this um, certificate, just get in touch with me and uh, we'll go through the process. Um, whether you're doing the, um, whether you're a current student or a new student, um, you still have to apply and go through a bit of an administrative process, but um, I'm here to help you with that. Thank you very much. It was wonderful to see you all. Thank you for joining us this evening. And don't hesitate to reach out if you have um, any additional questions. I will pop my email in the chat box right now too, um, just in case you want to, to reach out directly to me uh, with any, any questions or, or follow-up comments, things of that nature. So feel free to reach out if you have anything um, between now and, and, and decision day. So best of luck with this process. We all know that it's not the easiest road right now. Um, and, and choosing is hard, so um, good luck. I just wanted to um, add um, that you would not be able to apply to start, um, what year were you, 2021? 20, yes. You would not be able to um, apply to start in the fall 21. However, the curriculum will be ready for um, the students who are already at Lamont to start taking the courses and earn toward that um, degree. And because the degree has been, um, is going through the approval process and it's been approved um, there are a couple of stages. So it's already been approved two stages, um, but we would need to, um, complete that that um, approval process. And that's why right now we are late in order to, uh, to apply for it. However, if you are already a student at Lamont um, in the fall of 2021, you would be able to start the um, curriculum. Mm -hmm. And there's also just the opportunity to take the classes too, right? Which is exactly what John did. 
<laughs> so he's getting other degrees, but still, still has been involved in all the pedagogy classes along the way. So it's been a pleasure to have him. Well, thank you. Thanks for, for coming and spending some of your Friday evening with us. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out to, to any of us if you've got questions. We're, we're here to help and, and, and ready and willing to chat with you further if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good, great Thank semester, you. professor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thanks, Jack.